If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's so already says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be a part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at insory at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in at Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch, indeed. A child shall lead them. Uh, my partner in crime has decided that uh, she's going to go on to bigger and better things. So... Um, that was the last time you guys have seen Vin and Sori. Unfortunately, it's now just Vin. Um, but I think, you know, I told her, I said, you know, I think we'll still get the same kind of participation, just me. I, I don't I don't think that you're, like, as big of a, of a superstar as uh, on the channel as I think you are. I'm just being Listen dumb. no more to these lies. <laughs> Soraya has returned. She's returned. It's because we didn't get 60 likes correct. If we would have got 60 likes, you'd be... Oh. Oh. Oh, hey, Soraya has made her a Hey. It's a little hard to get She moved to Albuquerque. I don't know if she moved... Why would you move to Albuquerque? That's kind of... I don't, I don't know. I don't know anything about Albuquerque. I do hope she moves to a warmer climate at some time. <laughs> I will be your new... <laughs> who's, who's in the... Oh, me too. I will be your new co-host. I bring in the most ratings. I bring in the most ratings. Nobody has higher it's ratings true. than me. It's true. All right, guys. Here we go. Last song is Apostle by the band uh, Emolation. Same band. Different song. Uh, that's really good to hear about your dad, that's, bro. Jason, I was really... I wouldn't say it was like, father, blah, blah, blah. But they were like, in my heart, there was multiple times throughout the day I've been thinking about you and your dad's situation and really kind of like God turned word. So I'm really glad that he... You, you don't want to say through. that you've been praying for him because you didn't do it technically the way that prayer yeah, is supposed exactly. to be. Yeah, exactly. But it was prayer, but, you, but, but I didn't want to... But you don't want to take credit for something that you haven't do because you didn't do it like yeah. technically yeah. as a prayer. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> That's exactly I know, what happened. I know, what, I know what you're doing, but nobody knows what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> like I had a thought about you that I aimed toward God. <laughs> she prayed for you multiple times <laughs> We do that for a lot of y'all. Anytime we get, when you when we hear you guys say stuff or whatever, whether you know it or not, we're praying for a lot of y'all. And I know it's without your consent and all that, but you know it has its limits. It is what it is. <laughs> why do I ever? Why do I feel every sin and regret, even though I'm a pagan? Because you being a pagan does not erase the fact that you're an image bearer of God and that He loves you. Um, and you are obviously. Um, more graced than most of us. Um, so, and it says that he he writes his laws and stuff on our hearts. So nobody's without excuse. Like everybody knows. So you can be, you know, any any which way or wherever you know, whatever religion you're a part of. But still, there's something inside. Which when you had said earlier about that person, like when they got there and there was like there was nothing because there was that void that was there. Uh -huh. um, it was 
they're without excuse. Like there's not, you're going to know. What was it? No, he said, you know, he had only his own thoughts and then he heard the voice. You, you know. know, you know yeah. what this is. Yeah. All right, guys, here we go. Apostles, the band. No, the Emulation the is the band. Apostles, mm -hmm. the song. Ben is the uh, DJ. Vin, sorry, we're about to do this shit. You guys didn't get 60 likes, so no rap song. Maybe no, next please time. Please get up the likes or the dumb. Maybe, the next, dumb, time, maybe next time, losers. <laughs> Woo!
The name of the song was Apostle, Apostle. and the name was Immolation. Yeah. Immolation. Immolation. From the bloodied altars of the wicked king come poison doctrines of godless rage. So this was written in 2021 for an album that was released in 2022. Okay. So that's the social context. Okay. Okay. I don't know if that has anything to do. Wait, you said what? Because I just, I got distracted by middle saying that we have enough likes. So we're going to get your rap on recording. So. <sighs> From Say the bloody again. altars of the wicked kin come poisonous doctrines of godless rage. I don't know who he's talking about. From the field gutters of sickened minds comes corrosive diatribes aimed to destroy. Lead them to madness. Let me haunt you with these words, this chorus of evil resounding dark triumphant worship and trust. Devote yourselves to us. Murderous lust follow through, you must. And flashing scenes of horror come pestilential storms, piercing placid dreams awoken by our thunder. Explosive bursts of death bring coffins to the earth and chaotic waves of hate. The skies rain down our venom. Hmm. Sacrifice, the hounds will bleed, crippling fear. Bait them with terror. Growth beneath our roots so far reach. Programmed to destroy our perfect soldier forever the monster our secrets held deep after the purge your sounds will keep etc etc oh that's deep what do you think it sounds to me like the confluent religions particularly evangelical christian religions contribution to the military industrial complex oh shoot, particularly really? the GWA, the global war of terror yep the global war on terror, oddly enough, um, was a was really a secular land grab and a and a, a a map reorientation that used religion, particularly Islam, as the excuse in order for that to happen. So the global okay, yeah. war on terror, fear, fear we, of Islam. Well, they used our fear yeah. and ignorance of islam because it yeah. says right there terror as the bait yep so yep. he literally said that so yeah um now the muslim world did not declare war on america mm -hmm. um i know from the muslim world was and still is in fact terrified of america there is a reason now islamically speaking islamically speaking what's going on in gaza right now all able-bodied military-aged men. Um, it's called Fard al Ain. It means it is obligatory that they should be over there right now doing jihad. Mm -hmm. Okay? They're not. Why? Because the vast majority of people in the Muslim world do not have... They're not personally disposed towards war. Yeah, like they most live. They want to live. Or not. They want to live. Correct. Sadak. So the Muslims collectively were were not fans of Al Qaeda. They were not fans of ISIS, and that's the reason why um, when we declared war on them, we chased them all over the Middle East, and we didn't get a lot of resistance. You know, there's all this stuff about oh, <laughs> O'Neill and those cats, dudes. They're like, oh, we passed in a Pakistani airspace, and we thought we were gonna get shot. Stop. They didn't think that. You didn't think that at all. The Pakistanis didn't want no smoke with us. It's the same thing I told y'all about the Iranians. The Iranians, when uh, we killed Soleimani, everybody's like, oh my God, Vin, it's going to be World War III. Some of y'all are still in the chat right now. Go to middle America, you'll see. They don't want that kind of energy with us, bro. Everybody knows it's America, but we used Islam as a religion because they knew that we were, we were completely ignorant of Islam and all the rest of it. And... Um, they did it perfectly, and they accomplished their mission, man. They got all in poppy field. I mean, they they uh, they they killed Bin Laden in Pakistan, not Afghanistan. Okay, that happened in 2012, but we were still there until 2023. Mm -hmm. Somebody's gonna explain that to us at some mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. So, the fact of the matter is, even I remember exactly where I was when our pastor, shout out to our pastor, announced that uh, they caught. Um, Bin Laden. No, no, no. Saddam. Oh, Saddam. Yeah. Saddam I, I wasn't in church when we, when we jammed up Bin Laden, but uh, Saddam. And I remember everybody clapping 
And I remember, like, you know, post 9 11, dudes would go off, get deployed and stuff. You know, you stand up, you stand up in church and pray for him, which I think is obviously appropriate. But the way that the American warfighter was was idolized in even in evangelicalism at the time was pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. The and church started cheering. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, and of course, because the Bible course, says that God doesn't even take pleasure in the death of the wicked. Right, but but Saddam. But I remember. There was a lot of fear. I was him. cheering. I was cheering like everybody else. I wasn't afraid. I was angry. I, I, anybody that was Arab or Muslim, I wanted them dead. So I didn't care. So that's so crazy. So I'm sitting there. You've like, come a long way in that. Holy shit! You're like a different person. Well, that's what I was saying in the previous song. You yeah, see what I'm saying. Yeah, like, like it took me. It, it, it's a. It's been a long journey, but um, the war on terror was not a religious war from America's perspective, but. The American government absolutely used evangelicalism and evangelical Christians to push forward the moral machine. Mm-hmm. And, and there was a sense in which the evangelical mm-hmm. community became the lifeblood of the military. I can believe that. And so now, <laughs> I can't. Now these guys are talking. Because now we're in a, in a situation where for the first time ever, after you get to hear people who were fighting for an empire talk about what that was like. I don't think people understand how significant wow. that is. Like, imagine being able to talk to a Roman centurion after a battle with the Gauls and see what he had to say and what their mindset was and who they thought the good guys were and who they thought the bad guys were. It's, it's, mm-hmm. not, it's so interesting. Um, and so now you're seeing guys start to say, were we the bad guys? And these are guys who are not for other people, but in certain subcultures were like God level legendary. Mm -hmm. Like there are some people who like being in the same room and you saw me when I was with, with, with Brent with head from from Mm Cornwall, like the the first time we met, Mm -hmm. there are some dudes that are like at that level like you're in the same room with them and you're like, you don't know what to do with yourself. So to see people like that say, were we the bad guys? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, mm. it's, it's, oh, wow. yeah, it's like, I it's, bet. It's, 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 it's it I really fucks with you because yep. these were the people that you were told to look to yep. for inspiration you, yeah. and, and Hey, Hey, you got to make your mark and blah, 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 blah. And now you're hearing this guy saying this shit. So, yeah. Oh my gosh. So, but yeah, like if you, there, there's no way to separate. There, there's no way to separate evangel, and that's the same thing that's going on right now with the Israel, with the uh, Gaza stuff. It's the same thing. This would not be happening to the level it's happening without evangelical Christian 100%, 100%. support. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. You know, uh, you know, Ian was hitting me up about this about dispensationalism. Dispensationalism is an ideology. This whole Israel centric ideology is an extremely new idea, and it's extremely parochial. It's a very specific region in the world in a very specific time period where that ideology came out. It is not a Christian ideology. And our earliest fathers would have probably called it a her- heresy and called an ecumenical council and stamped probably, it out. Honestly. Probably. Um th- that's how that's how corrupt mm-hmm. dispensationalism is as is as a as as a doctrine. I'm not gonna get into it here. But um yeah man, we definitely played that role, man. Uh, and I, I I don't think there there are there are roles that Christians played and we were just bad guys and we were just selfish. This one, I, I felt that the government did a really good job of psychologically duping, because let's just be real. Yep. Yep. There isn't a very high primer on political literacy in the right wing evangelical space. Mm. And people, yeah, because they already know everything. It's not even that. Like what do you think it, it is? it's it's. I mean, I heard Jeff Knoblet say from the pulpit he's like you know i was watching fox news and then he goes you know that's the only place that's going to tell you the truth right this guy's got like ten thousand people in his in his congregation it's like you know those are the only people that tell the truth right now again however you feel about fox news just as a principle 
getting your information from a singular source at minimum you don't even have to be it just automatically should send up your, yeah. your but but people yeah this is where religion really gets nefarious because religion and religious authority a lot of times people are taught to circumvent their rational mind in order to you see what i'm saying oh yeah and that's one of the reasons yeah. why there's such a primer on our side for like being as close as we possibly can to science like what we've got yep. and all the rest of it um yep and that's one of the reasons i can't get any of my atheist friends to debate me anymore <laughs> <laughs> because the science really isn't helping them at this point in time. No. Shout out to all my atheist friends. That's been their canon for so long. <laughs> yeah, those those guys are dodging debates like you wouldn't believe I right now. Atheists are. are scrambling. I bet they are. <laughs> They're scared to death. Don't think it's just science, atheists. We good. But, like, there is a primer, especially, and I, I hate saying this way. I, I, I hate saying it this way, but... You can you can count on right wing Christians past a certain age to just slavishly follow whatever they see mm. um, from that from that direction. And I'm not saying that left wingers aren't that way either. I'm just saying that le left wingers will never say MSNBC is the only channel that tells the truth. They will not say that. Mm -hmm. Their blind spots are in different areas. But you cannot you cannot discount the central role that right-wing evangelicalism played in the quote war on terror which resulted in the deaths and misery of countless millions of people all we talk about is a death but we don't talk about okay so those million 1.5 million innocent people we killed what about their they parents family what about yeah. their moms what about their dads what about the, the children economy, that they the... would have had that they didn't have Jesus. like we have no idea what we've done you see no, what I'm saying? No, you're right. You're right. All you can talk about is killing as a metric, but there's there is no real well, and like the negative way to impact, measure what we've actually done to people. The negative impact that that brings into the the the, the zeitgeist or yeah, and and the way that, how much work because you know like in yourself like when you get dark how difficult it is to turn away from that and so like here's these people you've like killed all kinds of people and they're all in the same area and it's like. Who's going to be the one to help them get out of that when it, oh, yeah, it's a big giant mess that we've made. Cause you're right. It's more than the deaths. It's all of the pain that the deaths also create because the people that are dead are already gone. Jeez. Um. So mm. shout out to immolation immolation. Uh, I'm going to work on getting an interview with these guys. Cause this is the most recent record. The name of the, the name of the whole album is called act of God. Yeah. Very and the previous interview. song we listened to was on that record as yep, well, where exactly. people were, where they were talking about people. Oh, same uh, record. Oh, okay. It's on the same exact record where mm -hmm. they're talking about people abusing the cross for their for their own whatever. Yeah. So get this out there, immolation. We're a coming for you. Yes, we would like an interview. If we're you see Christians, this, we're Christians, and we would like to interview you yep. on your most recent record. Us, Vin and Sora. Vin and Sora. <laughs> Everybody reach out to Immolation. Yeah, let them, them know. Let them another, know. These guys, the other thing, too, is they got something to say. They obviously had some shit to get off their chest for sure. Mm -hmm. yep. But they can play their ass off. You talking about death metal? You talking about being heavy? You're not getting heavier than these boys. I'm just, I'm sure you're not, you're not going to get heavier than this band, bro. I'm sorry. These guys don't play around. And and their their decisions are, are kind of weird, too. They're kind of kind of like oh I, I didn't expect you to do that mm -hmm. shout out to the big homie middle earth for always praying for your boy <laughs> yeah some shit will go down i'm like yo middle pray for me pray for me like, literally 24 hours i always feel better after that wow every, every single time i reach out to middle for some help spiritually he's always there Thanks, shout middle. out to you middle randomly he's not doing anything he's not asking anything but uh i do i do see him in there i want to let you know it's very it's been very important to me buddy Every single time in my life, man, I've always had, God's always put some some older gentlemen in my life that I could say, hey! <laughs> Help me! And it works. It, it, it works. <laughs> That's so, cool. So, you know, look, man, there's a lot of benefits when, you, uh, when you're when you on the team. And this is one of them. He, he finds people for you. He's like, listen, uh, your brother, your brother says... <laughs> Uh, right after a stream like this, you only have pleasant dreams. Well, well, I don't know. 
To be honest with you, I forget about 95% of my dreams. So the only one, <laughs> and the ones I remember, I wish I could forget. So I don't know. Maybe, 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 inshallah. All right, guys, we are getting out of here. Much love to all you beautiful people. Thanks for coming through, you guys. Thank you for coming by. Um, thank you guys. 63 oh, yeah. likes today. So I got to wrap. All right, here we go. You guys ready for this? All right, here we go. We're going to wrap. I'm going to do this. I'm gonna oh, do wait. This. We didn't I'm, rate the song? I'm going to do this without it. Oh, we didn't rate it? I said it was a 9.5. What would you give it? Uh, an 8.9. All right. Where's the wrap? All right, here we go. Here we go. Now, listen. The next time I, I tell you guys this, we got to get to 60 a lot earlier. Because we went so late, I'm going to have to give you the other wrap that I had made for her. But there are more, believe me, and she can be witness. All right, here we go. You guys ready? Do the beatbox. <laughs> I don't know which what you're doing. Just do the beatbox. You know what a beatbox is. Not really. You know, you're making up a beat. All right. I'm not going to do it. Go, go, go. Ah. Yo, the cat in the hat came back from Iraq. All right, y'all. Here we go. Then, ah. Sorry, Al.